Welcome, this is Mike Hamilton from Trade the Easy Way with your midweek update. So let's just take a quick look at where we are. So the main thing is the markets are popping back on with the tech market, having found some monthly support and picking up. Um, a lot of profit taking in techs in the early part of this month as it got really too hot and the bond market spooked the market. Uh, as that, um, as the yields in bonds pop right up, which is uh, making the extreme levels of debt in uh, central banks like the Fed uh, very expensive to service. So, but anyway, let's just get straight into the markets and see what we are facing. I think it's worthwhile looking at weekly charts at this stage. Uh, here we are, halfway through the week, on this Nasdaq weekly chart. You can see there's the drop. So we've got two high. We have very divergent up here. Uh, new high in the weekly chart, lower high in the MACD. We're un still under the midline. The histogram's under the midline. So, But if we can hold this coming into Friday, then I think we could at least pop back into this structural resistance up here at 13 and a half. So let's look and see what that is showing us in the daily chart. On the daily chart, see there's your big uh, push up on the Tuesday and here we are just pulling back into support at very early Wednesday. I'm doing this 10 to 11 UK time, 10 to 6 Eastern time. And there's the structural resistance up there at 13,100. But I think we can we can potentially push through that and make get into some of these, this overhang up here at 13 and a half. So this is the Dow on the daily chart. This is why I've been <coughs> so bullish on this market. This is an 89 day average up here and the 20 up here. So we had this one, two, three wave pullback into this main support back in the last week and closed uh, very well on Friday. So to Monday, we pulled back into that support and here we are very well, sitting up at these all time highs so if any dip into this area here could see us come up to 32 and a half i've got 33 and a half as a main resistance area and i'll show you what uh, this is the dow on a weekly chart and you can see um i've kicked my fibs off from this 26,000 mark and pushed it up to 36 and a half so i think the next stop is uh, 30, just over 33,000 up here. So if we can break this resistance from the highs of a couple of weeks ago back to uh, this, tw this 2018 high, uh, then I think we can we can burst up there and get into 30 into at least 33,000. At that point, I would have thought we'd need a decent pullback. Um, but at the moment, this is threatening to break out of this little um, chart pattern we got here, this little funnel, uh, as long as we can break through and continue to make new highs here. Otherwise, if we start closing underneath 31.7, 31.8, uh, then this is going to pull right back. Uh, I'll talk to you about why I've got my fibs on that level on another day. I don't want to make this into a long video, so I'll move on. DAX on the weekly. Um, so we finally broke through this resistance. Uh, so that's a very nice pullback, a nice one, two, three wave. So we're still in wave three here. And 14 and a half is the number we've just, t we just tested 14 and a half, haven't we? Yes. Um, so we could potentially, if we can march on here, wave three might. 14 and a half is, is a big area of resistance. And um, volumes are not great, so if we come up here on low volume, this this may be a one, two, three wave um, finale, which could then, if if we then start closing lower here, could then fall back. All right, but in the meantime, for, uh, potentially we could go up to at least fifteen here, if this uh, wave continues. We can finally weekly on the FTSE. Um, so we've got all the support down here. 
that was bought last week, we closed higher last week. We have a little flat here at the moment, midweek, uh, but with the potential to go back to 7,000 and yeah, potentially break through the 7,000. Uh, I think the most likely scenario is we're coming to 7,000 and then who knows, maybe fall all the way back here or certainly pull back into this trend line before making another launch up and potentially ending up the year back up at 2020 highs. We've not even done that and the US markets are sitting nicely above all the 2020 highs uh, and this FTSE has still got a lot more legwork to do but it is catching up. There's some good stocks uh, in the UK uh, to some extent over the last couple of weeks uh, I've been buying UK stocks and backing off US stocks now I've started to dip into some US stocks. All right, let's have a look at uh, this one UK stock I am in. This is IQE. I bought IQE back uh, into last week. So I bought this, this drop. I bought this deep pullback. Came under this long-term trend line and immediately popped back up on Monday. So we're just coming into support on today. So we've seen about 33 and a half. We're back down here about 72 and a half, 71. Um, ultimately, I'm looking for this to come at least come back to 90. If we can get above 75 and 80, uh, we might, or if we get and get some tailwind behind this, pick up in towards um, 120, the back end of the year. All right, uh, volumes are improving. The MACD is just about to come along the midline and cross over the moving averages. So uh, I like this one. I think this is just a one, two, three wave pullback, an ABC correction pattern uh, before we resume um, some, some patterns as we've seen in the um, autumn last year. All right, uh, a couple of other stocks I'm in I'll share with you. Uh, this is BT. I started calling this down here at um, 95, 96p. Uh, so we had a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a 1, 2, 3 wave correction. So got back in here and now we've got a 1, 2, 3 wave move up here. So wave 4 is potentially a pullback into 130, 135 before we get back to 148 and, and, and higher. Again, looking for at least two pounds back end of the year. Will it do it? I don't know. I'm certainly buying dips and selling on um, oversold charts. So I'm just trading the ways. I'm not. I'm not buying down here and sitting on it forever. Uh, you can see if I pull back from this, you can see that this is a lot of congestion up here at 148. So I think it's going to take two, maybe three taps of that before that breaks. Uh, but when it does break, I think we'll see 180 plus. All right, so there's a lot of stocks like that around. Um, the stocks like BP, the banks, Barclays have got a pattern very, very similar to this. And so rather than chuck through all the, all the charts, uh, just be aware of you know, the sort of strategy I'm in, uh, employing and the kind of pullbacks that you could look at as well. So uh, as we get into uh, the middle point this week, waiting for Congress to pass the US stimulus package, uh, the, all dips at the moment are to be bought for, for now. Uh, let's see if that's the case as we get towards the end of the week and uh, see how we, how we close. But at the moment, uh, yeah, I think we're progressing well in this early part of March and cyclically, uh, as we head in toward March, April, this is the best time of the year to be buying stocks. Um, let's just make sure they keep going higher, they keep closing well and uh, don't suffer any major issues. All right, so that's my overview at the moment. Um, looking forward to the event on the 18th when I'm talking about day trading and how you can exploit some of these markets, mainly indices, but uh, of course Forex and you can, no reason why you shouldn't day trade stocks. I'll be talking about that, how you can do that with a funded account, how you, how you can do that with no risk at all. In other words, trading other people's monies. 
lots of um, organizations out there who are running these funded accounts and I'm going to talk to you about those extensively on 11 o'clock on the 18th. All right, thanks for listening. Bye for now.